All right, guys, so this is one of those videos that I have searched for on YouTube so many times and I find bits of it. I find little videos on how to make the flowers, but I have never found a video that teaches you how to make it into a doll collar step by step from moment one. So here we go. Okay, so here is everything you're going to need. You're going to need a side release buckle, a welded D-ring, you're going to need two lengths of paracord. So the first, the bit that you're attaching to your buckle is going to be, I would say, six times the length of your collar. So if your collar is going to be 10 inches, you're going to want 60 inches of cord for your centerpiece. Your second piece of paracord is going to be one and a half feet for every inch of braid. So for a 10 inch collar, you're going to need 15 feet of cord. I'm also going to say this is a thick braid. So you will need to add about five to six inches, maybe even more depending on the size of your dog. So I made this at 10 inches. It shrunk by about half an inch by the time I was finished. It wouldn't fit round a six inch neck, to be honest. So if you're going for a 10 inch length of collar, measure it out to be about 11 inches, but you're going to want to add five inches onto that. So measure it out at 16. You're also going to need pliers because you will definitely need to adjust this constantly as you go. So I use needle nose pliers, that's just my preference. You're also going to need, well this is optional, if you want to put beads in the middle, you're going to need some beads. You're going to need, I use an embroidery needle and I've used micro cord because it's you know, something I had lying around, it's also incredibly strong. All right, so here you can see I've attached my first piece of cord, my 60 inch piece of cord to my buckles. Now, if you wanna know how I do this, there is another video on my channel. You can go back and watch it there, but this video is already going to be stupidly long. So I'm just gonna skip right ahead. Now, you see I've crossed the center pieces and then I'm just gonna take my long, long piece of paracord. So this is 15 feet for me and I'm just gonna find the center of this cord just now. Right, so I found my centre and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath my cross that I've made in the middle and I'm going to take the two ends of my super long piece of cord and I'm going to take it through that loop. Now this is oh, so awkward to do this on camera. I normally make these on my lap so <laughs> apologies for the really awkward angle and I'm pretty sure I nudge my camera constantly. Okay, so once you find your ends you're just going to pop it through that loop that you've created and pull to tighten, trying not to nudge your camera constantly. Yes, you want to make sure also that you put it through behind the buckle, so don't take it on top of the buckle, put it through that gap and pull it all the way through until you have made a single cow hitch knot. So this is where it can get a bit awkward and it definitely helps if you have this attached to some work surface or into a paracord jig you're just going to try and tighten everything as you go including your two center pieces and you will have to constantly adjust this as you go because you want all of the petals of the flowers to be quite even and yep nudged my camera knew that was going to happen <laughs> so this is where i also use my needle nose pliers and i just i'm constantly readjusting everything Okay, so I've just kind of reorganized my strands. I've got my small strands here and my long strands here. And I'm gonna just start with my left strand. And what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna pop it over my two strands and through the center. And you see this loop that I've created here? I'm going to take it up through that loop, pull it all the way through. Now you're working with a lot of cord here, so it can be quite fiddly. There we go, and you're just going to tighten that. Now it is basically a series of lark's head knots or cow hitch knots, whatever you like to call it. So to finish that one off, I'm now gonna take it underneath through the center and up, and then I'm gonna take it through that loop towards the back and pull. This is where I realized I should have used multiple colors instead of just all black. But, you know, <laughs> you guys can let me know if you would like it in multiple colours. And we're going to tighten. And what I would normally do here is come in with my needle nose pliers and just really tighten everything up as I go. I've also kind of, this is kind of a video of little errors as well. I think I would also use a thinner paracord. So this is type 3, it's 550. I'm going to start using type 2, which is just slightly thinner. Still super strong, but does the job a little bit better. 
and also for the size of the beads that I use they're just a bit too small for this thickness so you'll see when I get to the end what I mean by that but that's essentially what I'm going to do. So now I'm just going to repeat that exact process again take my long strand over my two strands there and through the centre pop it up through that loop that I've created right there and pull it all the way through yeah, this length of cord can get tangled, especially when you're trying to do it from an overhead camera point of view. And then to finish that one off, take it underneath, through the centre, and then pop it backwards through the loop. So it's basically an over, under, over, under type of knot. Okay, so I've just given that a little bit of a tighten. Make sure you pull your short center strand as well, just kind of give it a bit more shape and don't be afraid to, you know, really mess around with molding it. So I'm now just going to repeat those two petals on the other side. Now it's entirely up to you how many petals you want. Some people only put the one on either side, some people kind of do two on one side, one on the other. But I'm just repeating the going over my two strands through the center and up through the loop. pulling it to tighten and then because I've gone over my strands I'm now going to go under my strands. One thing I did mean to mention earlier is when you pull the long strand to make your petal don't pull it out the way to the side pull it down otherwise your petal's not going to be shaped right and it's going to look a bit off so you want the oh, the kind of the strand that goes over your two bits for your lark head or your cow hitch knot you want that to be kind of towards the bottom where if you pull out to the side, it's going to be further up and it's going to just make your flower look a bit weird. So if you're wondering, if you've tried this before, like myself, and you're wondering where you're going wrong, that's probably it. So notice here I'm pulling down towards the back and I'll probably come in, yep, with my needle nose pliers again, just tighten up a little bit and make it a bit neater. I'm just going to finish off the petals on this side. So as usual, over through the middle, and up through the loop. And then just to finish under through the middle and pop it back down through the loop towards the bottom. Perfect. So now we're going to close up this first flower. We're going to take our short strands in the middle and like we did at the start, we're just going to cross them over and this will create the middle section for our bottom petal. So I'm just going to take my left strand, my long strand, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath and through that gap there. And I'm just going to pull everything through just now so that you can see where I'm going with the ends. So see this little hole here you're going to take the end of that long strand and you're going to put it through towards the back and you're going to just pull everything through now we're not going to tighten it fully just now because we're going to do the same thing on the right side so underneath through that big gap and then take your end and pop it through this small loop that you've created here And this bit can be a bit fiddly at the start until you get used to it. So you're just going to kind of tighten everything up bit by bit until it all comes together a little bit easier. And you'll see the first flower starting to take shape. All right, and that is us completing our first flower. Now that bottom petal is actually also going to be the top petal for your next flower. So your second flower, you're just going to start exactly as we did the last time. And you're going to take your left strand and we're going to start by popping it over our two strands and through the center, up through the loop and tighten. You're going to finish that off by doing the same thing, but going under, just as we were doing before. I'm not going to stand and go through it all again because you can just watch that first flower back if you're a bit confused. I'm just going to cut here and come back when all of my flowers are done.
Okay, and this is what it looks like when it's all finished. Now, normally I would tighten this as I go with my needle nose pliers, but for this video I just wanted to get through it all, show you how it's made. So I'm just kind of going over bits and kind of molding it to the shapes that I want. You can see how thick this is as well, which is why I say to add a lot more inches than you think you need. And just now we're going to go over how to finish it. So usually I would like a little bit extra on these because it just makes it a little bit easier, but we'll, we're still going to finish it off. It's not going to be the neatest finish. I normally like to try and hide my ends in amongst the braiding, but for this I'm still kind of working out bits and pieces. So I'm just popping my needle nose pliers through. I'm trying best to get you guys to see this on the camera. And making a little bit of a gap to push those through there. This is where another colour other than black would have been useful. At least I know this for next time. And just again. Now I'm just doing this kind of between the centre strands where the, the, the knots are on the buckle. And poking them back through towards the back because this is where we will cut and seal them. Right now for our long strands, so I'm going to take my pliers again and you'll see here this centre strand. I'm just going to go from the back, pop them through and this way I can attach the end of my long strand to my pliers. It just makes it a bit easier to pull it through. And I'm just going to repeat that exact same thing on the left side. This is the moment where you really want to take your time and make sure everything's tightened to how you like it before you cut and seal anything. But the actual cutting and sealing is really simple, it is literally take your scissors. Now I'm going to cut the ends but I'm not going to cut them as close as possible because when you burn it, it will burn away slightly so you want to leave a little bit of space for it to do that and then also that will allow you to press it into the cord. I'm just going to get my lighter and just going to carefully burn the ends and I say carefully because if your flame touches any other part of the paracord it can split it open. Not the end of the world unless you split it right open but it you know doesn't look as nice. So I'm just pulling these through a little bit more so I've got a bit more space. And then I like to get my pliers and just kind of press it into the cord. Definitely avoid touching it with your skin because at this point it really burns. <laughs> and I say that from experience because I have burned myself several times. So if I can avoid you doing it too, then at least I've helped someone. <laughs> and that is it. You have made your very own flower collar. Now I like to put beads in mine, which is what I'm just about to show you. Okay, so you have your completed flower collar. Now I'm going to use micro cord. You can use just any sort of thick string, anything like that. Now I just had micro cord lying around and I'm also going to use an embroidery needle for this. So I'm just taking my threaded embroidery needle and popping it through the strands at the back and pulling it towards the front. You can see there just through that loop and then back again. I'm going to go over that little loop and then back towards the back. So as you can see, I've popped the first two beads on. I'm just going to show you how I sew it because I, I mean, you can sew it any other way. It's not like the only way to sew these in, but I essentially like the thread to go through the middle, but you kind of have to go at it from a diagonal which I'm just about to show you. So I've 
taken my needle off and I've popped a bead on. I'm going to put my needle back on and I'm just going to show you exactly where I like to go through with my needle. And you'll see kind of here where the center strand goes round through. I'm just going to go underneath. Now it can be a bit fiddly so beware especially if you're using a sharper needle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that needle, I'm going to go again <laughs> underneath one of those two centre bits in the petal. And this way the thread's going to be secure but it's going to look like it's come from the centre and it's just going to hold the beads a lot better. So I'm just going to finish this off and I'll come back to you when it is all beaded. And here we are. Now you'll probably be able to see what I mean when I say I want to use a slightly thinner paracord because you can kind of see gaps where the beads are and I'm very picky so I like mine to be <laughs> really snug in the flowers. So just to finish off you see here I'm just going to the back and taking my needle through that loop at the back and I'll do that a couple times and just tie it off, seal it, you know it's not, not rocket science this bit. And here you are, one finished beaded flower collar. Now you'll see what I mean here when I say I started off with a 10 inch long collar and that wouldn't even fit a 6 inch neck. So please, if you make this, make a judgement call. So for Poirot, I like his collars to be about 13 inches. I would probably make it 18 to 20 inches because it is so thick. Lengthwise, I actually only lost half an inch. So yeah, I would definitely add five six inches if you're making it for a giant breed add more but i just love this collar and i think it is absolutely perfect for spring and summer and you can actually make this so that all of the flowers are different colors so if that's something you guys are interested in i will definitely make that and show you how that can be done otherwise have a great day please if you do make this take photos Take photos of your dogs wearing it. I really would love to see it because Poirot is a German spit so he is very fluffy so you can't actually see his collars which some might think it's a waste but <laughs> I really want to see this on your dogs so please take photos, comment, like, subscribe, you know the drill and I will see you guys next time so bye! <laughs>